Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Ouellette and Casey Berman. Hey there, welcome back to Love or Leave the Law podcast. My name's Adam, joined with my co-host Casey as usual. And today we're going to continue our discussions on beliefs, having some faith and trust, and then finally believing in what you want. We're going to go into some more beliefs around the legal profession. What do we have as a collective in terms of lawyers in general? How do we look at things differently than some uh, professions? And today Casey's going to be teaching, uh, and I'm going to be more uh, interviewing him. So let's talk a little bit about how we feel weak as a person, as a lawyer, when we don't want to ask anybody for help. I mean, this is a big one in, in the lawyer uh, space. Tell us a little bit more about that, Casey, and your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Adam. And everybody, we've been talking about beliefs, limiting beliefs, uh, how our mind works and what we think about that's getting in the way of us really optimizing our legal practice or, or leaving the law for something else. So please check out the most recent episodes, which have sort of led up to uh, to this one. Um, I grilled Adam on the past few, and he taught, just gave some really great insights into into how to help us with those beliefs. And today is kind of shifting it to me. This kind of is near and dear to my heart with a lot of people that I work with that at Leave Law Behind in helping attorneys leave the law. Um, and the first thing is really around this belief that um, we don't need help or that it's weak for us to, to even ask for help. Uh, so I speak with, uh, I work with a lot of attorneys who are looking to, to leave the law. Um, they want to change careers. They want to shift. They're sort of unhappy with it. And, and once we work together and really understand that they're sincere in doing this, they, they should really leave the law. They don't, they shouldn't stay in the law. And so once we get to that point, um, the, the next point is to, you know, who else can we go to for help? Who else can we, can we go to for, uh, for help on how to learn about a certain industry or how to learn about a certain technology or so on? And lo and behold, what happens a lot is this belief that attorneys, um, even when they're leaving the law, should be able to do this on their own. And that going to ask for help is something that is seen as a negative. It's something as showing a weakness. It's something as showing that that you just don't know it all. And what I always uh, uh, tell the the clients that I work with is, welcome to the the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, in the rest of the world, the non-law world, the alternative world where we don't practice law, but we do all the other business and the other stuff, you know, asking for help, delegating, making mistakes is really um, uh, accepted. It's encouraged. Granted, you don't want to fumble on everything. You want to improve and get better. But um, it's really uh, I really see that a main obstacle to people leaving law is this idea that they they just can't look elsewhere. Um, and it, it is so limiting this belief. Now, I know we have this belief that we need to be perfect. Um, our brief needs to be totally tight. We can't have typos. We have fiduciary duties. I mean, there is a real need to be perfect and to and to maybe not show this need for help in law, but it's just different when you're leaving the law. And it can even be different when you're looking to refresh your practice, um, to really, uh, you know, pick ideas from other people, to really admit that you just don't know what you're doing. Um, those are things that are celebrated and accepted outside of the law. And it's something that I, I really feel people as we're looking to change our life and empower, um, it, it's a shift in belief that, that I hope people take away with and, and feel more comfortable about. Yeah. And it's interesting. Um, I'm listening again to the e-myth for lawyers, which is basically how to systematize your practice. And it was written some time ago. And one of the things that uh, these two lawyers helped uh, the author write this, because he wrote one for the book for small business, and then they started writing it for CPAs and attorneys and this and that. I'm re-listening to it again because I think it's apropos because I've implemented a lot of the stuff in there. And I've yeah. taken what they've taught and I've turned it around and I've made it different. But regardless... What they say in there, and I think one of the attorneys that uh, co-wrote the book, I think his name is Sandy, but whoever, says that attorneys don't want to ask for help. And that is part of the downfall that we have as a profession in that here's an, a normal attorney. They're either in a small or medium-sized firm. They're struggling to really do what they want. They are working too much. They're not making yeah. enough money or making the kind of money that they want. And they think that they've got all the answers inside of them. Yeah. They don't. We don't. Yeah. This is why 
early on when I became an attorney, uh, about two years in, I hired a coach and yeah. I sat down and I said, what's my ideal coach? And I, one of the, the main requirements was that they had been an attorney or were an right. attorney because I didn't want some business coach that really didn't understand being an attorney and the, the problems right. and the challenges associated with being a lawyer. And, right. and from that point, I've had mentors and coaches that have helped me because I knew I didn't have all the answers. And that's why yeah. a lot of times I've turned to books, uh, pro online programs, and that's kind of my mentors now is more online programs and books because I live that ideal life as a lawyer. I made a really good living and blah, blah, blah. And, and so there aren't a lot of people that are in that space that could have helped me back when because I had helped myself. But yeah, most of us don't even know that you can hire someone like Casey to explore yeah. leaving the law. And, you know, a lot of people sign up on Casey's list, but you can see the disconnect is they're, they're reading the blog, but they won't ask for help. And then when they That's finally right. do ask for help, they tell you, right, Casey, they tell you, oh my God, what the F is wrong with me? I should have done this years ago. I've sat and stewed and hated what I've been doing for so long. And yeah. I finally made the decision to ask for help. That's right. And I can't believe it's taken me this long. And so regardless of whether you want to hire Casey or someone like me or go to a program or whatever it is, everybody needs help. Casey yeah. and I help each other weekly with ideas. Hey, Casey, what do you think about this idea for Esquire Academy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like, and vice versa. And we throw stuff off each other and we support each other. And that's part of my mentality is get in a small group. Yeah. Of like-minded people, whether it's a mastermind group of small business people, a mastermind group of attorneys, which I'm setting up where if you want to join us in yeah. a online group that's nationwide, worldwide, and then I teach people how to take this information and set up local groups in your area so that you can figure out what's working now, what's working with everybody online, what's working offline, but hire a coach, get yeah. some help. We don't you know it all. And don't feel bad if you think you need help. There's nothing wrong with it. I have gotten so much help and spent a lot of money on coaches and consultants over the years. And I can tell you, I wouldn't be who I am today without yeah. that support and help. And I know for a fact, because Casey and I work on his business, I know a lot of you are sitting back going, oh, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Yeah. If you hey, want really out of the law, call him, email hey. him. <laughs> Jesus. And you know what, Adam, you know, as you, as you know, I'm a sports fan. Uh, but if you like sports, if you like uh, music, if you're a movie, you know, actors, Hollywood, cooking shows, whatever it is, uh, I really look to them. Um, so we look at it as a distraction. Fight, but I look at and I listen to the interviews and so on. I hear of a top star, whether it's Joe Montana, a football quarterback of me growing up or Tom Brady now or LeBron James or so on. They all have coaches. Yeah. Tiger they Woods Tiger was Woods. the best in the world for a long time. He had multiple coaches. He went through yeah. different coaches sometimes because he didn't see eye to eye. But you you need the support. Every team, every team, yeah. I don't care who they are, has some kind of coach. We all and need you know that help. We all need it. And you know what's really interesting for me is whether you hear it's Denzel Washington saying how he changed his acting style or whether it's LeBron James. I was just flabbergasted when I heard, I think it was about Tom Brady saying, well, you know, he learned how to do this better at age 38. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> Tom Brady, quarterback for the Patriots, is the top He's at the pinnacle of his career, pinnacle, right? Yeah. And he's still learning. Yeah. He's still listening to someone at age 38. Yeah. He's won X number of Super Bowls. Like, what do you mean Tom Brady learns? Yeah. You mean Tom Brady sat there and said, oh, I get it. And he did. Yeah. And it's the same thing for us is that, you know, whether we are uh, uh, want to stay in our law and really build our practice and grow it, whether we want to leave the law, you know, we can emulate and model the, the greats that are out there. And I think there's this irony that when it comes to law and comes to lawyers, you know, we can't be touchy feely. We can't be spiritual. We have to be empirical. Yeah. We can't really visualize. Yep. Um, we can't ask for help. We have to be perfect when everywhere else in the world, you know, really visualizing and really asking for help and getting that support system is not only accepted, it's celebrated. It, it's yeah, expected. yeah. I mean, everywhere so, you look, there are 
groups that have a leader, at groups that have a coach, a, a trainer, whatever they are, it doesn't matter what kind of group. It, it, everybody yeah. has a teacher, and what they say is when the student is ready, the teacher will teach. Yeah. And for me, when I look at the world in general, um, we, we, we sit back and we don't want to look outside that box we keep ourselves in. And I, I liken it to, and we talked to one of the previous episodes, Casey, you said something and I loved it. Um, you know, a fish is in water. And when you go to the fish and say, hey, look, you live in water. And they go, what the hell? Water? 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 What do you mean water? What's yeah, water? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's exactly this. But, but I liken it to this, and I heard this. I don't remember who said it because I, I read a lot of books. And so, God, it could be anybody. But regardless, I think it's been said many times, is we live our lives in this basement of a mansion that is our life. We lock ourselves in that son of a bitch and we don't let ourselves out. It's dark in there and we wonder why we don't change. We wonder why we don't move forward or we don't have new ideas or we don't, we're not out reading or following other people and, and finding out what are ideas that we can use to better our lives. And this is what this podcast is about. So what we're trying to do here, say. ladies and gentlemen, is we're trying to tell you, you have the key to that basement uh, apartment that you've locked yourself into. Take that friggin' key and open the door yeah. and walk out into the sun and realize there is so much more out there for all of us That's when right. you start to collapse the limitation. Yeah. And understand that if you ask for help that, and that you're not perfect, nobody is perfect. And that's the next next, seg next segment. Say that five times fast. Yeah. The next segment is all about the fact that as attorneys, we feel like we have to be perfect. And there is no such thing. Yeah. No such thing. Casey, talk to I us know. a little bit about perfection. Because I know... Everything we've talked about so far, you work with your clients on, and this is, as we said, this is the problem that some people just won't reach out to you for help, and then when they do, it's like, holy shit. So the other part of this uh, adage in that we don't want to ask for help, and then we expect ourselves to be perfect. We put ourselves up on this pedestal, and we create so much stress and drama yeah. in our lives because we feel that if we make a mistake, that's the end of the world. And it's not. It's no, absolutely not. It, in right. many ways, it's it it it's a learning experience. It's the end of something and the beginning of something else. So so let me tell you about why perfection is not only not needed uh, when you leave the law uh, or looking for alternative careers, but but why it can actually hamper you. So I had a client who uh, was doing litigation. Um, again, I work with people who leave law behind to help them leave the law and to find uh, jobs and roles and careers and alternative, uh, you know, non-law. Uh, spaces, everything else besides transactional litigation. And so working with uh, an attorney in LA, uh, she was just over law, just was more collaborative, uh, didn't want to do litigation anymore, um, a number of reasons why she wanted to leave. And I encouraged her, I said, you know, go talk to people. Obviously, keep it a confidential. Don't talk to people at your firm. You don't have to hire a blimp and tell the whole world, <laughs> but start start telling people, start talking to people about it. Um, get help. So she started, was very hesitant to begin with. Mm. And one of the main reasons was she wanted to be perfect. And what I mean by that is she didn't want to be embarrassed and have people think, oh, so your life isn't so good. You're trying to leave. You're not mm. as perfect as we thought. She liked the stature that came with being an attorney. So she started telling a few people and they said, okay, well, I'll keep you in mind. First of all, they didn't point a finger and say, ha, ha, ha. They said, Interesting. And I think they even appreciated her opening up. They opened up about their own life. They were lawyers or non-lawyers. And she just had a great conversation and became even better friends with these people. So there's there's all these other benefits. But the one that I want to talk about is she was talking with a friend who wasn't an attorney. And she finally opened up with total trepidation, was, was shaking about how she didn't want to be an attorney anymore. Hmm. And her friend, believe it or not, said – well, you know what? I'm doing recruiting for this big corporate company. I'm actually recruiting in attorneys for their in-house department. Hmm. I'm not an attorney. I don't know anything about attorneys. Uh, I want to do recruiting somewhere else. What do you think? You know attorneys. Hmm. And she had talked about how recruiting or sales or working with people is something she like. Long story short, this person brings her in. She interviewed. She gets hired, and she's now 
been a year now doing legal recruiting wow. uh, for this big corporation. You never she loves it. You never she know. gets to be a matchmaker. <laughs> she does her sales. She loves people. She doesn't ever practice law, but she knows how lawyers things on and on. So it's just another success story I've had through Leave Law Behind. It wouldn't have happened if she had not essentially said, I'm not perfect, if she had not asked for help. And I, I throw that example out there, and there's so many others where you just, when, when you say, when you go to the world and say, I'm not perfect, you know what? It's going to be fine. Not only is it going to be fine, but people are going to be flattered and honored, and they're going to want to help you. You get the help. You go from there. You change your life and, and, and you know become happy, confident, and a lot of self-worth, make more money. So that is an example of how being perfect and not asking for help can be real limitation in just building relationships and also in just kind of totally overhauling your life. Yeah, and as human beings, there is no such thing as perfection. No. No. The ego mind, the personality self, is always going to have a problem with something. And so it's like when Casey and I have developed our online courses, there's a part of us that never wants to put it out because it <laughs> has to be perfect. And Casey That's and I right. went through this when you launched your course a few months ago. And yeah. and it is a human trait that we, we, we don't want to, quote unquote, embarrass ourselves. And, and we don't want to feel bad because we haven't done what we're supposed to do. But at a certain point in your life, you have to realize that you're never going to have perfection and you're always going to be working towards something. And that is what life is about. It's about the journey, yeah. not the destination. I hate to throw that in there, but it's very true. Yeah. And in it my is. own life, I look at this and it's like, you keep saying, well, when I get to this point or I make this much money, then I'll be happy or then I'll do this or X. A lot of people go through their whole lives. And when you look at what people are on their deathbeds and they regret was not making the movement towards what they really wanted in their lives and just staying stuck. So yeah. there is no such thing as perfection. And as a result of that, do the very best you can with That's what right. you've got and make a decision. And a decide means to cut off, make a decision at a certain point when you're done with that brief, when you're done with something for the day. When you've made the decision to move into a different area or niche of law, you've made the decision to hire a coach or leave the law, yeah. understand, make the decision and don't look back. No. Don't, you know don't the, look back. There's a writer, Seth Godin, yeah. at SethGodin.com. Great guy. Great He's author. Great author, uh, online marketer, philosopher in many ways. I encourage everyone to, to check him out. I read him every day. And he's got this phrase. It's called ship it, S-H-I-P, it, I-T. Just ship it, whether it's an idea, a product, yep. whatever. Just get it out the door. Obviously, you don't want to do subpar material. Right. But, but just when it's ready and go. And, and think about what we have every day, our iPhones. You know, if, if Apple had waited or the Galaxy or whatever you use, you know, if Apple had waited until iPhone 7, to ship it, mm. uh, they never would have shipped it. And the only reason there is an iPhone 7 is because it's been built on all of the stuff they've done. I mean, these are they are marketing it to the world, and you know what? They've made mistakes. Things weren't totally perfect. They've overhauled the software. They've overhauled how things look. They've changed the earphones. And, you know, we look at it like, well, that's just developing of a, of a product. That just happens. Of course, Apple can do it. Well, you know what? We can do it, too. We can go out there and kind of put ourselves in front of the world, whether it's within law or not. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Yeah, I mean, look um, at the iPhone 7. They, they took off the headphone jack, which everybody was like, oh, my God, how are you doing that? And that's 50-year-old technology. And it, it's a, a waste of space from their perspective. And I have an iPhone 7, and I think it's a good idea. But as soon as that phone shipped, was it perfect? No. There were problems where people had these new headphones that were plugging into the lightning jack, and it was dropping the headphones. And so yeah. don't you know that they had to go in and fix it? And so this is exactly the same thing in life. If you put something out there and, and it needs a, a little bit of a fix, you do it because do it. you understand that you ship it. <laughs> That's right. I love and that the, statement. You, you just, you ship it. That's what Seth Godin talks about. And sure, there's parameters within the law. There's deadlines and judges who give you the dirty look and so on. But in, in, the, in the big scheme of things, there's always an opportunity to, one, you don't have to be perfect, and two, you know, to fix it. Yeah, I, um, I, and, and this is a good uh, uh, an aside on this, and we're, we're going to move into a couple other short topics, and we'll end this episode. But I... Um, I have a, a lady that I'm, I'm mentoring, and uh, I had her get a copy of my book, and she's reading my book. And I've had lots of people read the book and gotten lots of great feedback. And don't you know that she found a small typo 
that everybody under the sun has missed, including the, the editors that I spent thousands of dollars and paid over the years, and even the lady that did the uh, book and internal guts and all that and put that together. And she emailed me and said, oh, you know, I just found this thing. There's a number part wrong, and you just need to change this number. And I'm going, holy shit, all these people miss this. And it it's it's still not perfect. It never will be. I don't yeah. care what happens. That book will never be perfect, but it is about the main ideas of it and sharing those ideas. And regardless, I am not a uh, person that likes the minutia anyways and so i yeah. i wouldn't have never caught that but that's just an aside and um and, and so. you know everybody uh, adam has written adam's an author uh written raise the bar you can find it on amazon it's something that i read when we when we first met um and a lot of what we're talking about in this podcast the beliefs um are written there you can you can read it on your own at your own pace you can always out make outreach to adam but you know, Adam is is some what I admire uh, a lot. I admire about Adam and the reason we're working together. But a lot of it is we lawyers have said, "Well, I like to write. I want to be a novelist. I want to write my book." Adam's done it. Mm. He wrote it, and uh, we've talked about the tips and tricks to actually writing a novel. We're going to get into more detail later. But uh, guys, I really encourage you to to check out his book, Raising the Bar, on on Amazon. It was um, a, a labor lot. of love, and it's for you. It's for you yeah. as a lawyer. I mean, this is exactly why I wrote it. And yeah. a lot of what we're talking about here is within those pages. Yeah, I mean, you, you would learn a lot in depth from the book. And yes, there's Esquire Academy that's going to take you on a super deep dive into this stuff. But th- that book, for the kind of money uh, you'd pay for it, is is a lifetime of my knowledge and many, many years as a lawyer and, and everything right. that I learned uh, on a, on a gr- uh, grand scale. But yeah. Um, no, thank you, Casey, for saying that, and yeah. I appreciate that because it was a labor of love, and it, it was something I had to let go of limiting beliefs on, and we've talked about uh, that in previous episodes, so we won't go there and, and reiterate ourselves. But the next part of this is really why do we become lawyers? I, and I yeah. think we've talked briefly about this in why the law sucks and then why the law is a great profession, but I want you to reconnect with why you went to law school and why you became a lawyer guarantee you that there's probably something there around wanting to help people. And we have a limitation in us that when we get into the law and you see the hubbub of it and you see the stress of it, and then for a lot of us, it really becomes about the money. It becomes about, man, how can I make as much money as I possibly can and retire early and not work that much? And that's all well and good. But you really are in business to be of service to the people that need your help. I mean, when you look right. at almost every type of law that I can think of or imagine, you're helping people. You're helping yeah. people in litigation where there's a dispute, solve the dispute, hopefully, in a reasonable fashion. <laughs> when you have someone that wants you to do a will for them, they need help. They want their right. estate planned. Right. If you do transactional work like I did a lot of, you've got a real estate a uh, contract that needs to be closed, or you have a bank loan that needs documentation. I was being of service to people. And Casey, you were yeah. being of service to your companies that you've been general counsel for, uh, guiding them in the right direction with all, all right. of the laws that are out there. And so what I really want you to do is reconnect with the reason why you went to law school and forget so much about the money. Because if you do the work we've talked about and you study what we've we've taught you, study it intently and start to implement it, the right. money has the ability to come to you if you're open to it. If you open that pipeline that we've talked about and start to slowly pull that cork out and allow it to come to you, the money is really not that big of a deal. The reason you're here in this profession is to be of service to others and to help That's others. Right. And so I've always looked at the idea of anybody that has been in, in the law for uh, seven, ten years or more to start to mentor younger lawyers. There's a real need for this right now, too, and you're starting yeah. to see a lot more mentorship opportunities in the local communities and the local bars. But I, I say this because if we're to grow as a profession, if we are to establish ourselves as a trusted profession once again, I think this is integral to... Uh, moving us forward in big ways. And so if you haven't looked at the opportunity to mentor some younger lawyers, if you are an, a lawyer that has a, a foothold and you know what you're doing and you can really yeah. help them, um, reach out to your local bar association and see what they're doing. And if they're not doing something like that, maybe you can spearhead something to that effect. Now, down in Broward County, where I practice law, um, 
they have a really amazing mentorship program that they're growing. And so there's people there that could be a resource for you if you want to start doing these kinds of things. But why did we become lawyers to be of service? Always remember that. Because for me, yeah. in my professional career as a lawyer and owning law firms and companies associated with law firms like title companies and closing companies and stuff like that, when I really connected deeply with wanting to create raving fans of my business that would go out of their way to talk about me and my companies, I really understood that it was about attracting ideal clients, first and foremost, the ones that really needed my help and that were aligned with me and my vision and everything about my business. But the other part of it was just giving them the best quality service and feeling and everything around what we were doing that yeah. I could. And so that is why you are in the law, to give people a reason to love what you do, love you, and refer you to people. When you do that, money, do you think money is an issue? If you're thinking and, and aligned with your uh, intention and your in, in intuition and the ideas that start to flow, oh, maybe I should join a networking group or maybe I need to go speak in front of this group or whatever it is. And we're going to talk a lot more about networking and marketing because I love those topics. Now, people look at me and say, how the hell do you love that stuff? And I, I don't know. I just do. So I've learned a lot about it. But always connect with that and look at how you can do your job better and how you can automate it is going to be a big part of what we talk yeah. about. How can you can automate the simple things that you and your staff do so that you don't have to do them. You can have software yeah. do them. Casey, what do you think about any of this? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to wind down in a, a few yeah. minutes. But before we do, I wanted to add uh, to that, for those of you who are listening uh, and who are looking to leave the law or, or considering exploring uh, leaving the law, um, you know, I think one of the, the limiting beliefs we have is all I can do is legal stuff. That's all I can do. My skills are only suited to be an attorney. Um, how can I even consider that my skills could be used outside of the law in marketing or technology or operations, or I don't even know what those words are. Mm -hmm. I can just do transactional stuff. I can just do litigation. And so that's a, a very limiting belief. And it's actually extremely false uh, by proven by the fact of all the, the people that I've worked with who we've, we've been able to transition them uh, into non-law jobs, into director of logistics at a tech company, into product management roles, into operation roles. And really it came first with this idea and this trust and this faith that the legal skills I have, um, you know, upselling client work, being the adult in the room, putting out fires, writing persuasively, um, um, negotiations, you know, uh, and negotiation, yeah. contract dealing, drafting, any of it, con all yep. of that, dealing with the details, dealing with important people, judges, so on, um, you, you know, being the psychologist, whatever it is, you know, those are skills that the rest of the world needs too. Believe it or not, it sounds obvious to many people in the world, but, but for many lawyers, we don't think so. And so there's a limiting belief here that all I can do is legal stuff. And I want to uh, just let everybody know that that's uh, not true. Um, and taking those steps, whether it's at Leave Law Behind, whether it's with a coach like me, but there are steps you can take to really recreate your narrative, look at your skill set, not necessarily in a different way, but taking those skills that you have and realizing that they apply and fit to a lot of other areas. And what that really gets to is to, to a point before of why you went to law school is to add value. Mm -hmm. is to help people. And Adam's talking about ways that you can help people within the law through mentoring or obviously um, aligning with better clients. But you can also do this outside the law and really take your skills to help uh, companies, nonprofit organizations, or whoever it may be. That Pro are bono work with uh, people that need help but can't afford it. That's a big exactly. issue that we've got going on right now. Access to justice, whether it be uh, civil or criminal or anything. I mean, people, some people... Uh, don't have any money and really need help. And, right. and unless you've got a lot of money in the, in the way we've built our system in this country, um, you don't have access to lawyers or the legal system right. um, in general. And, and so let's wrap this episode up with ask for help right. if you need it. <laughs> ask for help. Ask. Look at your limitations in a profound and deep way. If you really want to change, change your habits. Your habits are the 
culmination of your beliefs. And we're going to talk right. more about how to make and break habits, make new ones that you want and break the ones that you don't. Uh, but do something today to move yourself forward, whether it's ask for help, go buy a book, take an online course, sign up for someone's information, go to YouTube and search That's right. for some various content on stuff that you want to learn about. Um, in, in our next episode, Casey, we've interviewed a really funny guy. Uh, I love that um, interview, and I really look forward to having him back. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the next episode and Malcolm? Yeah, Malcolm Kushner, uh, former lawyer, left the law, uh, wasn't sure exactly where he was going to go, loved public speaking, and he's become one of the top uh, humor consultants. Yeah, that's right, a humor consultant, uh, where he advises uh, corporations, uh, organizations, executives um, on speech writing, on public speaking, and also on how to incorporate uh, humor into a lot of what uh, corporations do from employee empowerment to retreats and so on. Um, he's hilarious. Uh, he's going to come back a number of times, uh, but we really drilled down with him into not only his experience on how he left the law, uh, but also um, tips and tricks that he gave on how to do things like how to write your first novel, um, how to uh, do public speaking better to help you whether you leave the law or, or to help you network, and then also getting into uh, his thoughts about uh, how to create a non-law alternative career. He's hilarious, a lot of fun. Good guy, uh, too. He's got a lot of experience in the business world, and he's worked some with some very massive companies that yeah. we've all heard of, uh, written 11 books, and uh, this is not one to miss. So right. join us check in us the next episode. We appreciate you being here. If you really are getting a lot from this podcast, please share it with others. This is about building a community of like-minded people that want to grow and want to share knowledge with each other. And so don't keep us a secret, please. Thank you. That's right. Please share. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate being part of the community. And we'll see you in the next episode. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye. 